What did they have to say? The next question, which came from a YouTube comment, was, Hey, Ethan and Kat from Justin Laughin. Thank you so much for the information that you share with us on a constant basis. Hey, Justin. I have a 14-month-old English lab and have been trying to introduce her to gunfire. I've been using a starter pistol and noticed that she will ignore the gunfire at great distances, but as I get into around 50 to 75 yards, she will stop retrieving and look up. There is no running away scared or any real response except looking at her ears will fold backwards. Mm. If this happens, I stop. I'm not sure if she loses interest in the bumper because we use them a ton, yet I don't have access to pigeons, and my wife refuses to allow me to bring some in. Come on, wife. Should I try and switch to a dummy launcher because of the excitement of a bouncing bumper to entice the prey drive? What would be your thoughts on a gun sensitivity? I think that this would be an amazing Yawa segment. Thanks so much, Justin. Which, obviously, we also thought it would be a good Yawa segment. I'm going to say to start off with your specific words of when her ears pin back, you stop. It sounds like that's a a multiple rep, right? It's like the first one maybe or the second one and then the third one this happens or something. It doesn't say specifically, but it it doesn't give enough specifics. And that's what I was going to say. Um, And being able to read what her body language is actually doing um, what you're explaining sounds like sensitivity, not extreme gun shyness, if you will, but definitely the gunfire pulls more focus than the task at hand, which is not what we want. Yeah. And you've said that, you know, you use these bumpers a lot for retrieving, so they aren't as an exciting situation uh, because... They're old news. The bumpers have been used over and over and over. And depending how long your session is, that's why getting to see a session or getting more information of, you know, how many reps are you doing? For example, if you watch Thunder's Gunfire Intro, we did that with bumpers. Yep. And I was doing the training session. Our good friend Peter was helping. He was gunning. Ethan was videoing. And I had bumpers with me and I had Thunder. And we were doing the session and then I watched the video back and was like, did I really only do two bumpers with him? And you're uh-huh. like, yeah, yeah, you did. I'm like, huh. I felt like I, or maybe it was three. You uh, did three, but there were two shots, I think. Okay. Maybe that was it. Yep. Uh, because the first shot. You guys were un- Miscommunicado yep, with our gunner. And so I only did three bumpers. And the gunner made the right choice of not shooting exactly. in that situation. He's like, I didn't know what was going on there, so I didn't shoot. Yep. So I only threw three bumpers for him in that entire gunfire intro training session. And I watched yes. it back and I was like, did I really only do three? Yes. Yes, I did. But it was because I wasn't counting in my head, well, I got to get to five or I got to get to 10. I was just watching Thunder and he had to work a little bit harder for those bumpers because they ended up bouncing into some taller cover and mm-hmm. he was searching and it was getting warm and he wasn't really letting down excitement level yet, but I didn't want to get to that point where then I'm like, oh, well now we've lost momentum. Now we've lost excitement. Let's stop now. No, we want to stop when we still have that drive and desire and excitement going. See, I think that's the biggest thing, not knowing, you know, I mean, which is a lot of the folks that are listening here, and we completely understand that, because at one point in time, I was there. Uh, I've not always been born with the ability to understand and read dogs. That was a learned behavior. (laughs) See what I did there? Um, Over time, that took experience, you know, I mean, we had to experience these things, and there were definitely those times where... And still today, I mean, I'm not by any means perfect, but still today, I push sessions too far on occasion, on occasion. But ultimately, it's knowing when to stop. And that is like, that could, that could be another video in and of itself. The power of knowing when to end. I mean, is Yeah, when to end a training session. Um, and it is because we see it in all aspects of training, not just gunfire introductions, not just bird introductions. We see it a lot of times with trained retrieve sessions. We're watching, you know, Patreon videos and going, oh, we made so much progress there. You should have stopped. Yes. <laughs> not pushed forward. And we actually did a video review 
Uh on our YouTube channel. We asked permission from one of our patrons and showed, you know, hey, we are reacting to this video and this is when you should have stopped, not here. So that would be another really good video to reference, just understanding, hey, you can sometimes ask too much. But without seeing a video of your actual training session, based on the information, it sounds like there's some sensitivity. Speaking of which, I want to throw just a little call to action, if you will, for the folks that are listening to this, because this is an important topic rolling into hunting season, which is in a lot of areas well underway or right about to be underway. And if you guys want to kind of have an experience of what uh, the patrons are getting the opportunity to experience on a regular basis, but opening yourself up to the criticism of the interwebs, um, go ahead and make yourself a video of your training session. Okay. This is a freebie. We're only going to pick one, maybe two, but anybody that's watching, make yourself a video of your session, type at the top. It has to be titled standing stone video review, standing stone video review. And if you put that in the title, I'll be able to search, find them before Oh, next week or the week after something. After this goes up, we'll give it a week. And then um, we can pull one of those videos and then do an actual review showing you, um, you know, what it looks like to be a patron on a regular basis. And we'll say, all right, so right here, this is looking really good. And this set up right. And this not so right. Or this is where we need to do something different. Or this is what we need to do here, there, and different. And you can see kind of what on a first you know, exactly what it would be like for the folks that are signed up on Patreon already and they're getting their videos reviewed on the daily. Every day except for Sunday, except for sometimes when I work on Sundays and people scold me for working on Sundays. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But Standing Stone Video Review. Post your video, title it that. And if after I do this, if I search Standing Stone Video Review and nobody does it, then we'll assume you're all cowards and you should just sign up for Patreon where it's private between you and I. But um, cowards. I wanted to get back to talking about this lab and the potential for some mm-hmm. gun sensitivity. Mm-hmm. So if there's truly gun sensitivity oh. there, it's definitely not something that we want to compound by continuing to utilize bumpers and gunfire if it's That's not key. working right now for you. Um, birds may be the answer, which I know if you can't have a loft and your wife's like, no pigeons, mm. um, but there's the potential that you could pick up some training birds just for the day that you're not going to keep around, but you're going to be using for just this purpose. Um But again, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to do too many bird retrieves and you don't want to lose momentum. So it's kind of a balancing act. Um, But getting, you know, two pigeons, then you can say, okay, I'm going to use these two pigeons and then I'm going to call it quits. Doing less is better than doing too much. Correct. So um, I wouldn't suggest your other option of utilizing a bumper launcher yet. If you see. Absolutely not. Yeah. If you're seeing. No, that's a hard no. If you're seeing some sensitivity or even what you're questioning is that sensitivity, we don't want to compound it with a bumper launcher because they are not excited about chasing down this bumper prior to the gunfire happening. The gunfire happens and then the bumper goes. And if your puppy is already, or dog, I guess it's 14 months old, is already Mm -hmm. having apprehension about gunfire and they don't have the chase that they're thinking about and the excitement of a retrieve, then you're going to be causing more problems. So don't and do that. That bumper launcher is drastically louder than a blank pistol or even a shotgun. I mean, it's a sharper noise because it's using a 22 caliber. It's a different type of noise that comes out of those as well as the way that they're ported and all of those things just makes them loud. And you got to have your dog pretty close to you in order to be able to see the whole thing. So it's not ideal to be set up that way if we see any type of apprehension to the noise. And the last little plug, which I know we keep talking about Patreon because it is so powerful for people, um, but a really good option for a situation like this where you're like, I think I might be seeing some gun sensitivity. We definitely don't want to repeat a session, repeat a session, repeat a session and compound that problem. No. Um, which live, baby. Doing it live, <laughs> exactly, where you can be set up videoing an actual session. We're watching it as it happens. And if we see the ears pinning or anything like that, we can say, Hey, wait, wait, Justin, I'm pretty sure we're talking about Justin. Yep. Justin, 
Uh, stop. Stop what you're doing right now. Collaborate and listen. Build up some excitement again. Get your puppy and your dog pumped up again. Throw another retrieve. Throw another bird. But don't do any more gunfire. And end on a high note. End on a good note. And then we can, since we saw what was happening as it was happening, we can help you make a plan for your next session um, before you said, oh, well, maybe I just do a couple more. Or, you know, this is what how I ended. And then we watch it and go, well, that might not have been the best way if it was a video that you'd already completed and training session was over and then you posted it for us to review. Absolutely. So great question. I think that's all that we have time for in part one. Yeah, right. and I, I started the whole song in my head. Stop, collaborate and listen. There's something that we're missing. This is uh, the game that needs to change in order to help this dog. Not, I have run out of lyrics there. Obviously, Ethan's not a rapper. Not even close. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching this week's part one of Yawa. We will be back shortly with part two. <laughs>